Okay, so uh, welcome back to the next number six um, video in this uh, V-Ray Basic series uh, from Render School. This video is going to be about um, just an, an introduction to uh, arbitrary outputs or render elements or AOVs or whatever you want to call them. Basically, just outputs that aren't just the RGB as we're seeing here. Um, we're all used to having the alpha, but there's a, there's a lot more stuff you can get out of it. So that's what uh, we'll be we'll be looking at in this video, and I will try and keep it somewhat short um, because I uh, tend to say that I want to do stuff quickly and then it takes forever, and I apologize. Um, I have this Stanford Buddha model here, and I've just put a uh, a quick, very dark material, V-Ray material on him. Uh, added a, quite a bit of reflection. I've split up the highlights and reflection glossiness. So uh, our our speculus, uh, specular highlights are sharper than our reflections. Uh, turn on Fresnel. I'm just going with the 1.6. Um, and I think that's pretty much, that's all I've done. Um, I'm going to get into this in next video or the video after, but I'm using environment overrides just because I like uh, to have my V-Ray Light Dome use a low resolution HDR and then grab the reflections from a high res one. And I might have gone a little bit overboard with this guy, um, being as the, uh, <laughs> the HDR I'm using for reflections and stuff like that is uh, about 500 megs. So, yeah, you know, that's probably a tad, tad overboard, but it, uh, it looks nice. So, uh, more than just the uh, dome light, I've got a spherical light in here, and that's all for demonstration purposes, so that will make sense in, uh, in a short while. But uh, why do we even want to render out all these arbitraries or whatever uh, your system calls them. Uh, they're called render elements in, uh, in V-Ray. Basically because we want to be able to put the whole thing together and control stuff better inside of our compositing package, such as uh, Nuke. And I, uh, I, I differentiate between two car kinds of arbitraries. One is um, the ones we use for beauty, uh, which basically when, when added together will result in uh, the beauty render. And then there's the technical ones, which is um, uh, stuff you use for relighting, uh, masking, uh, I don't know, uh, depth of field, all that stuff that's, uh, it doesn't have anything to do with how this stuff looks, but it's something you can use afterwards in, in Nuke. And that's something we're definitely gonna focus on later and, and some video, but for now, let's just um, see the V-Ray part of it. So we jump into our render settings and render elements, this tab. And right off the bat, we have a lot of stuff to choose from. Um, I want to make sure that we can rebuild a beauty pass out of this uh, and control some of the elements. Also, this is really good for um, for troubleshooting, figure out where where's my flicker coming from, where's that blue color, what, whatever. Uh, actually, that's one thing I need to do before I drive myself insane. I downloaded these guys' OBJ files from the uh, internet, and I have a tendency to not have uh, not be visible in reflections and refractions. Um, yeah, I just I just needed to do that for my own sanity. So uh, to recreate our uh, beauty. We need reflection, refraction, self-illumination. Uh, we actually don't need the shadow per se. We need the specular, we need the lighting, we need the GI. Um, in this case, we don't need the caustics. Uh, we could if we were actually doing that stuff. Uh, but let's get the shadow out as well, just in case, and actually diffuse just so we can see uh, in an easier way what it is that we're doing. So I'm going to hit render. 
and with what we have now it's all stuff that's being rendered anyways so it's really not going to give us a performance hit but it is going to uh, take a bit more memory um, basically because it's it's multiple images that has have to be uh, held in memory at the same time um, so while it's nice to just turn on all sorts of stuff uh, also bear in mind especially in heavier scenes that uh, uh, it will take a toll on your memory but uh, let's see what we have now if we go up here in the v-ray frame buffer uh, we had RGB color and alpha but now we have a lot more stuff to select so I'm going to choose reflect which shows our pure reflection uh, the reflection that goes into this guy. Uh, refraction we don't have yet because um, we don't have anything refracting in there. Self-illumination, uh, self-illumination and lights or shaders or what have we. It's going to be in here. Specular, uh, it's just a couple of little dots in here. Uh, we'll make that more obvious in a second. Um, lighting is all of our direct lights. So that's um, the, the dome light and the spherical light but with no specs, no reflections, no fanciness, just the lighting. Um, GI is our GI solution. And that's our shadow. And I know this looks weird, um, but in reality, what you want to do is, um, like the, yeah, it, it just looks weird and you need to go with that. But uh, what you want to do is just add that on top of your, uh, of your, uh, all the other layers together, and you'll have your uh, your your shadow. And diffuse is basically just the colors, and we don't really need this to rebuild. I just want to see what it was looking, what it looked like. So we actually get rid of that again. But the trick is, if you take all of these guys and uh, take them into Nuke and just merge all of them together using plus you'll get this with one exception actually I'll just remove this guy uh, I didn't have the background in there and usually I don't think you'll want that in there but uh, uh, if I have to actually be honest and say we're rebuilding this whole thing I need to get that in there as well so uh, those are the passes we need for rebuilding our beauty render and let me just show you I have another Buddha in here um, this guy is uh, basically just refractive glass like oh, while we're at it I just want to make sure our specs get a little bit more obvious so we'll just pull them out like this and hit render and it's loading up that big HDR file oops here comes a Facebook message. Um, but yeah, you see this guy is all glass and, and, and such. So <clears throat> we should be able to see him in the refraction render element. And we will in just a second. While we're at it, you can see that we're actually getting a little bit of... Uh, in the last class we talked about... Um, uh, using GI for uh, for caustics, we're getting a little bit of, of that in here. Uh, just a little side note, but that's our refraction. Um, self illumination, specular. See, they got a little bit bigger now, so you can actually see them. Lighting, pure GI, shadows, and the background. So all this stuff. Drag it all into the same uh, merge node instead of nuke, set it to plus, and you will get this image. So that's um, that's like the the beauty reconstruction render elements. But there's a couple more that I uh, I just wanna wanna show you guys. Um, I'm not gonna go through everything. I'm just gonna show the show you the uh, the ones I use most of the time. So. Uh, one of them is extra text. Extra text will just apply whatever you throw in here to the whole scene and render it. So this one is actually going to take more time 
um, to render because it's not stuff that would have been done otherwise. So I put a V-Ray Dirt in here. Um, and if I just grab a bit of this, render it, that's going to show up as um, another render layer when the pre-pass is done. Um, if you want to do like a UV pass or a whatever pass, um, you can always drag whatever texture you want into this guy, and it will render it at render time into a uh, into a render element, a render layer. But bear in mind that it, it will actually slow down your render. Um, but of course, not as much as having an extra render layer and stuff like that. So it's a really good way of, uh, of doing it. Um, and we're still, like, we're not affecting our beauty. So that's all, all good. Another one that uh, we'll want to use is the set depth. I'm just going to turn this guy off just because he's slow. Uh, you can turn these guys on and off per render layer um, nice and quickly. So set depth goes from black to white. Um, and 1000 is probably a little bit too far. See, so yeah, I'm just going to go with my instincts here. I think about 100 is good. You do not want to clamp your uh, depth, and unless you're just using it for fog, if you actually want to use it for uh, uh, depth of field, turn off filtering because filtering is just going to mess it all up. Um, so let's see what we're getting out of this. I really should have uh, scaled down that image, shouldn't I? Well, either way. Set depth should be showing up here in a second. See, depending on the diff distance to the camera, it's going to get brighter and brighter and brighter. Um, so that's useful for a lot of stuff, uh, mainly depth of field, also stuff like desaturating your backgrounds. Um, you'll want to get this out. It's so cheap to render that you can even do one that's filtered and one that's not, uh, if you want to use it for depth of field and, say, a fog effect. Um, but one thing I actually like to do is uncheck depth clamping and then set white to one. That just means that uh, if you read the pixel value and that pixel value is one, it's because something is one unit away from you. If it's a hundred, it's a hundred units away from you and it just uh, makes a lot of sense. It won't show the image because it's just going to be all white, um, but, but it's going to make sense inside of your compositing package. Uh, so that's how I'd usually do it. And the very last one I want to show you is the Multimat. The Multimat is terrific. Um, let's just quickly jump into some of our materials here and add an attribute. It's called a Material ID. Scroll all the way down. Call this one 1. You should get one as well. All the way down, boom, two, and might as well. Oops, sorry, that wasn't the shader. Uh, Lambert one. Ah, I'm just breaking everything now. Material ID. This doesn't have to be a V-Ray material. It'll go on pretty much anything. Three. And now if we jump back into a multimat, you can see we would set what's going to be red what's going to be green and what's going to be blue. We just set uh, the material IDs. If you check this guy, you can set it on object IDs if you uncheck it. Um, so if you have, say, a group of stuff that you want and one, uh, want to create a mat for, you can create uh, an object ID for them. Uh, or if you want all your shaders, you can use uh, material IDs. And I think it goes up to like 255. So you can create plenty of these multimats um, for whatever you need and you can do some that are uh, material IDs, some of that are uh, object IDs and what have you not. So um, it, it's definitely the most elegant solution I've ever worked with for creating mats for, uh, for your renders. 
So let's see what happens if we go into that. See, now we get a beautiful RGB mat for our objects. And again, it takes memory, but hardly any computational time. So uh, you are in a very good spot. Um, I'd rather have too many of these than too few, but again, don't just throw stuff at your compositor. So it, it's it's really that simple, and uh, I've never seen it that simple before. So use that. Um, it's brilliant. And actually, I wanted to do another video on this, but I'm going to show you in the side of this one anyways. Uh, the last little one, I've said this before, is this light select. That's really cool as well. Um, has a few caveats, but uh, let me just create two of these. You see how that creates a set at the same time? So you've got um, uh, you got your render element, but you also get a set. And the the uh, whole concept of this is that you drag middle mouse drag your lights uh, into these light selects. You can have one or more lights in each of them, and when you hit render it's going to split out the, the contribution from those lights. The, uh, the issue with it though is that it's going to uh, give you both diffuse, specular, uh, well, diffuse and specular, I guess that's it, uh, for each of the lights. So if you really want to be able to control everything, you'll need to create two of each light, uh, have one that's diffuse, one that's specular, and um, create light selects for each of them and it's going to be a little bit of a mess but for a lot of stuff um, it can be really useful so you see this is the light select from my HDR and this is from the uh, sphere light that was hanging right up here but you can see it gets both both of uh, the, the diffuse lighting and and the specs in there so just bear that in mind when you uh, when, when you when you do this stuff, but it, it is an awesome way of controlling, like you want to fine tune the temperature of each light or whatever inside of your compositing package. Um, this is terrific. So with all that being said and done, that was a uh, quick introduction to the render elements and why we love them. Um, I'm going to get back to this at some point. Uh, in the near future because there's a lot of stuff to cover um, but this should get you started so um, go ahead and sign up for the newsletter on renderschool.com or, or just uh, keep an eye on it um, I will try and get a lot of stuff out there as often as possible and I hope you like what, uh, what I'm putting out there uh, otherwise uh, let me know if there's anything you want changed or covered or or whatever. Um, so I appreciate you watching and uh, take care.